Hello, my name is Emma, and today I'm going to be giving you guys my spoiler for your review of A Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthurst. This is a super awesome fantasy novel. I was actually sent by Owl Crate. I believe it was a part of their December box. I really had not heard anything about it until getting it in my Owl Crate and reading the synopsis, and it was like, holy wow, I gotta read this book. Not only did I really want to experience this story, but as I'm participating in Diversity Bingo 2017, if you'd like to learn more about this whole reading challenge I've been participating in this year, I'll leave a link to my TBR and all the information you can get on it below. But for one of these squares for Diversity Bingo, it was Own Voices. And so I really wanted to read this book as it is an Own Voices novel written by an LGBT author and it involves LGBT characters. As it is a fantasy book, it takes place in this world where there are a couple of different nations. Firstly, we have Princess Denalia or Denna from Havenmont. Now Denna has magic pyrokinetic abilities, meaning she can control fire. And in a world where in lots of places magic is condemned, or you are forbidden for using magic. She's had to hide it for all of her life and it gets even more complicated when she's engaged to the Prince of Mineria. Mineria is one of the nations that is like super over the top, completely against magic. It's completely forbidden and Denna has to move there as she is going to one day be their queen. So as Denna is adjusting to life in Mineria, she is forced to take horse riding lessons from the prince's sister named Mare. So in the process of Denna and Mare gaining this friendship, there is actually an assassination attempt in the kingdom and it kind of drives everyone wild. And through this experience, Denna and Mare grow closer and their friendship develops into more. To be clear, more means a completely steamy, romantic girl-on-girl -girl relationship that is just like the best thing I've ever read. Uh, if you can't tell, I loved this book and I gave it five out of five stars. As someone who has been trying to read more diversely for 2017 and obviously the future, I love fantasy novels, but a lot of diverse books tend to be contemporary. So when we got a book involving LGBT characters in a fantasy world. I was already excited for it and it just completely surpassed all of my expectations. Like I said, this review is spoiler free so you don't have to have read A Fire and Stars to watch my thoughts, but I would definitely recommend picking it up at the conclusion of this review if you're interested. So the first thing I want to say about A Fire and Stars is I do feel it was a little slow to start. I really believe this could possibly be because a lot of the beginning is about explaining the different regions and their history, which a lot of times is not as interesting to me. As a lot of you know, high fantasy, which is the genre of A Fire and Stars is something I had a lot of trouble with in the past. And while I feel I have really overcome a lot of the resentment I held toward high fantasy, my still remaining issue is that I have a lot of trouble kind of conceptualizing the various interactions of different nations because it's not in our regular world, especially because this is a fantasy standalone. It's really hard to condense years and years and years of history into the very beginning of the book and make it very clear to propel the rest of the story while also not letting it over take the story like it's a lot to do in a fantasy standalone and it's something that I just generally have a problem with in books. I do feel it picks up fairly quickly as soon as Denna gets into my area the story is much more interesting it's just the introductory chapters where we're learning more about Denna her family and the entire world that the story takes place in that were a little rough to get through but like it's so worth it to push through those first few chapters. On the magic system I do feel it was really well developed for a fantasy standalone again we have so many fantasy series all over my shelves they're series they're long you have so much time to develop them when it's a standalone you kind of have to condense what might be developed in six books into one. So in addition to like world building and keeping up with a regular plot you also have to have an established magic system that makes sense and have it develop and end somewhere. I personally feel that A Fire and Stars did this very successfully. I really like when a book has great descriptions of what it's like to experience magic and I feel like those moments where we are seeing Denna's powers develop and her powers being used sometimes against her will, it was just really clearly written and that makes me very happy as a fantasy reader. The magic system is also not the primary focus of the story. It is heavily, heavily reliant on the story of Denna and Mare's relationship. So I do wish it could have been developed more and we had more scenes of magic being used, but nonetheless, I'm satisfied. So we're going to talk about my favorite part of this book, which was the portrayal of sexuality. First things first, always got to make this clear. I'm straight. I don't really get to tell you if it's good rep or bad rep, but I'm going to tell you my interpretation of it based on what I've read from the book, based on what I've read from the community talking about it, and uh, some extra information I've gotten from interviews with the author. There's a really great interview with Audrey Colthurst that I will link below, and if I forget to at the time of uploading this, please remind me because it's great and you should really read it. But the author states that some of the inspiration for her novel was that she wanted to create a world without homophobia because she feels fantasy was created for us to take the less desirable parts of society and create something new that we would be more happy with. I think that is so 
fantastic and those are exactly the kinds of fantasy books that I do want to read but because in this world we don't have that external pressure on people of this society that is heteronormative or we don't have hatred from people based on their sexual orientations I personally feel that sexuality was handled in a very authentic natural way and that was really refreshing to see in literature we have two girls that fall in love with each other and they never have to question loving somebody of the same gender because they haven't grown up in a society that rejects that sort of thing you know the issue is never oh my god I'm in love with a girl it's oh my god I'm in love with my fiance sister or oh my god I'm in love with my brother's fiance I just really loved that the antagonistic force in their relationship was not the struggle of identity it was external circumstances which was just really really nice to read in an LGBT book there's also a minor character in the book who reveals that she had a past relationship with a woman and Dada's reaction is just like oh they were lovers just every time we had a scene that was approached so positively I was just so pleased to read it another cool way sexuality is approached in this book is that neither of the main characters are explicitly stated to identify as one sexual orientation it's totally ambiguous you can't really call this book a lesbian romance just because it's between two girls because one of them could be bi they could be pan they could be demi or none of the above I just think this is a really important theme because while I do fully understand that labels can be an integral part of one's identity and give them a sense of belonging, not everyone should be forced to put a label on themselves, and this book really enforces that. I just think this book is full of so many cool, unique, refreshing approaches to sexuality, and I really commend the author on her execution. On a related note, a couple of months ago, like before I had really made a point to want to read more diversely, I used to always see posts that were like, all hetero couples have no chemistry, this is why LGBT couples are always better. So my initial reaction at the time was, eh, I think any sexuality has the potential to be a really great romance. But then I read this book and I was like, you know, they may be on to something here. I have read so many books in the past couple of months that had straight romances and like, they're fine, they were cute, I shipped them, but reading about Denna and Mare's relationship was so different. Like I have not felt this way about a romantic couple in literature in so long. While reading, I would get so tingly and have butterflies just by reading about these two people in the same room. And I could read other books where these giant makeout sessions and I would just be like, Okay, what's gonna happen next? There is just something absolutely electric about Denna and Mare's relationship. They have so much chemistry, they are so deeply in love with each other, and I just can't even contain how much I loved their relationship. They just complement each other perfectly and I really just want to read more about them. Whether you are looking for a book with an LGBTQIA plus romance or if you're just looking for a really really great couple to ship, I would highly recommend A Fire and Stars either way. So now I really want to talk about the character Thandi who is the Prince of Minaria, the person that Denna is engaged to and Mare's brother. I don't really know why this point has stuck with me so much but I picked it up while reading and it just stayed with me until now. <laughs> so I kind of noticed something. While reading books that have to do with like arranged marriage or like forced marriages the author tends to villainize the partner that our main character is engaged to or at least make them unappealing so that we're forced to prefer the love interest like with the infernal devices how could you like Mortmain? and then I just read Heartless previously to reading this book and Marissa Meyer made the king very very dopey and you just had no care for his relationship with Kath I really hate seeing this in books because I detest when an author forces you to feel a certain way and makes their opinions about their characters yours. But I am so happy that A Fire and Stars did not follow this trope. While Denna obviously loves Mare, Thandi is still written to be an attractive and appealing character. Like he thinks very highly of Denna, although they don't know each other well. He thinks she's very intelligent and that she would make a good queen. In the book, Mare kind of implies that Thandi might have been a womanizer in the past, but at the point he is in now, he seems to truly care for Denna's well-being as well as his kingdom overall. And in my opinion that makes him a viable enough potential love interest or king in this case. But instead of making him vicious or cruel or utterly dull in order to combat his positive traits so that we're forced to prefer Mare, the author just spends her time developing on Denna and Mare's relationship and making sure that they truly love each other without having to force us to feel that way. I'm not saying he's a perfect character or I prefer him with Denna because that is not true, but I really like the fact that I can still appreciate certain character traits without feeling forced to hate him in order to love Denna and Mare together if that makes sense. It's very clear throughout the entire novel that Denna and Mare love each other 
because they love each other and it has nothing to do with external influences and it was so refreshing to read. I feel they complement each other's personalities so well. Like Mare is brash and rebellious. She doesn't care for social norms. She wants to do what she wants to do and she's gonna do it. And while they're both princesses, Denna takes on the more stereotypical princess role. She's proper, she's polite, she follows the rules, but they kind of change each other in their own ways and make each other a better person. They have a very equal relationship while also still being individuals. Like I said, Thandi a really interesting character because I do think he makes a good king and while I don't always agree with his reactions in the book I think he's a very reasonable well-written character. Uh, there's even the side character Nyx that is Mare's best friend and they go on a lot of adventures together and it's nice to not have it be solely focused on the relationship. There is just so much unique complexity in this novel and I loved it so much. That is really it for my review on Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Coulthurst. This has definitely climbed to the very top of some of my all-time favorite fantasy novels. I think I think the diversity in this book is absolutely great and if you're looking for something for diversity bingo or if you're just looking to expand your reading taste I would highly highly recommend it. I am so happy I was finally able to film a review and talk about how much I love this book with you guys but let me know in the comments of this video if you've read A Fire and Stars and what your thoughts were or if you're interested in reading it I would love to know but that is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new one bye!